Hey, this is Trevor from Smashworks. About five to seven in the morning, just finished working out here at Diablo Alamo. We got Ricky in the background, awesome coach. Takes good care of me. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about some, uh, some knee issues, some knee pain, some knee mobility. Uh, I got all the equipment out already so we can make it really easy and talk about it. I'm gonna find a place to put the camera so we can, uh, we can film all this. But what happens is a lot of people, when they're dropping into a squat, even when they're doing a lunge, even just standing, they're getting a lot of issues with their knee. They don't have full range of motion. They think they have full range of motion, but what they wind up doing is they capture a lot of that motion um, in the hip. So they feed slack into the system in the hip, or they try and feed slack into the system in the ankle, which usually has no mobility. So um, in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand the camera to, uh, to Ricky. Here we go. So what happens is when you look at the knee and you bring it up on a box, a lot of people get a lot of pain up at the cross of the, the, the super patellar pouch. And that's because the knee tends to rotate in and they get what's called a valgus force. So that knee tends to collapse in on them. Puts a lot of strain on here. This gets all junky, all full of a lot of adhesions. The ankle doesn't move. I did a mobility video on the ankle to show you how to loosen up that heel cord. I did one yesterday and I did one a couple of weeks ago. But I'm gonna show you how to loosen this up. And the problem is, is even when we're squatting, they're shooting the knees forward. So they're getting a lot of shear force on those knees. Nah, you're good. You're okay. totally good. Nah, you're totally <laughs> good. Right. I got the best cameraman around you <laughs> behind there right now. So. They're shooting the knees forward, so they're not keeping those knees or the shins uh, perpendicular to the ground, so they're putting a lot of shear force on the knees. That's just degrading this even further because technically when we squat, we should be sitting backwards instead of shooting forward like this, and people don't have that mobility. So we're gonna concentrate on the knee first, and, uh, and we're gonna also talk about what's called terminal knee extension. So I have a lot of people, in fact, I had a patient come in yesterday where her knee extension was here. So if you look at my leg, I'm not fully extended at all. That is full extension and locked out. Now the knee is kind of a complex joint. It has a hinge to it, but it also has what's called the screw home mechanism. So the last about five degrees of the knee lock into place. And if you can't lock into place, unlock it, and you don't have a functional muscle that's doing that, which is the popliteus, you're gonna have a lot of problems with the knee. So mobilizing the popliteus isn't really an option right now because there's a neurovascular bundle that runs down the back there. You start smashing that with a lacrosse ball or a, a baseball and you're gonna have a lot of problems. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna smash the top of the knee. I'm gonna show you how to do some, uh, some extension and some traction to uh, recover a lot of that terminal knee extension. Then I'm gonna show you a flexion gapping technique. You can just adjust your own knee instead of coming to my office. <laughs> so first thing we do is we're gonna grab a lacrosse ball, find a box where you have the ability to let your leg hang off the box. And if you look at the knee here, if you wanna come in close just for a second, if you look at the knee, Right here is where you wanna be. So this is the patella, okay? This is the base here, the tibial tuberosity. Right at the top of the patella, don't be afraid to get right almost up against it. What you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be extending and relaxing the knee. So on the extension, really give it a good squeeze and then just let gravity take it. What I like about doing it this way versus face down is you can let gravity take it through that passive stretch instead of having to actively do it when you're face down. So you're gonna take, in my case, we're gonna use a 45. What's really cool is where the bar fits, your lacrosse ball fits. It's like it's made for it. So we're gonna bring this here, we're gonna put this up here, and we're just gonna let that 45 camp out on it. And don't be afraid to move it around all the places you need to. And we're just gonna, oh, God, take it through ranges of motion. And when you find a spot that hurts, like right there, don't be afraid to just smash back and forth a little bit. Really grind away on that. Come out to the outside. And the cool part is when you're done, and I want you to do this for about two or three minutes. Remember you do this, until you make a change. And my knees are really, really sore, especially this right one. Ricky's trying not to laugh right now while I'm doing this because it hurts and he knows. But go ahead and do that until you get some change. Dump the ball. It's a bumper plate. You don't need to be afraid of dumping the weight. That's gonna take care of all across the top of the knee. Get a lot of that range of motion. So when you're dropping into the bottom of that squat, you don't have to be afraid of having some issues here and you don't have to have problems because I mean even this thing right now just by doing it, I have a lot more range of motion. You can see it if you come here and you come here, I have a lot more range of motion on this right side and I did that for about 15 seconds. So imagine doing it for about two or three minutes. So when it comes to terminal knee extension, you have to be able to go about two or three degrees past extension to lock out your knee. So the easiest way to do it and recover it fast, I mean really fast, is get a green band, nice heavy band, loop it around the ankle like this so it stays that way, and then get some good distraction on that knee. 
Don't be afraid to really put a lot of distraction there. You're gonna take an ab mat. I want you to shove it in behind the hamstring. So what that does is it gives you a little bit of space so you don't have to really, really crank on your quad to get it to lift up off the ground. Go ahead and lean back like this. And then if you look down at the foot, make sure your foot is nice and flexed like that so you don't snap the band. So you wanna turn the camera just a little bit to get the knee. There you go. Nope, aim down towards me. Oh. There we go, perfect. All right. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna relax. And you can see how that knee and that leg comes off the ground and I get into that terminal extension of the knee. You're gonna do this about two minutes. Go ahead and do that and if it's not distracting enough, you know what the good thing is? These bands are really forgiving. You can just go ahead and crank on this knee all day long. But I really want that to gap that knee out. Okay, so it's gonna provide the space in that joint. Get that knee moving the way it's supposed to. Take this off. This one's really cool. I love this. It's like a self-adjustment. Now you guys all know I'm a chiropractor, PT, and I do all this stuff. We can do this in my office, or you can just do this on your own. You're gonna take a rag, about this size, so if you look at it, okay, put it behind the knee. Just make sure it's something soft. Don't use a baseball or a lacrosse ball. People tend to, they send me all these messages, hey, I tried it with a baseball, it hurt. Don't do that. So go ahead and put it behind the knee. Give yourself a little bit of a pull. You can pull that right in. So if you look, I'm compressing this and you can actually see I'm gapping the knee a little bit here. And if this is really easy, if you can't get anything, you'll hear a clunk sometimes if this is really out of place. You know what you can do? Get down like this. You heard that? Yeah. That clunk was my knee. So you can just come down and just camp out on that. I have my feet nice and stable. And all I have to do is just kind of rock back and forth on that knee. Get that to full command. All I'm doing is gapping the knee and bringing it back together. Gapping the knee, bringing it back together. The anterior portion of that joint capsule tends to get really tight and really locked up. So this is going to help to loosen that up. This will help reset that knee too because sometimes that knee just doesn't track right. What this is going to do is bring it back into a position where it tracks right. All right. Hey, Justin. All right, so that's how you take care of this knee. We've got mobilization of that super patellar pouch. We've got distraction with the band, help to get that terminal knee extension. We've got basically a self-adjustment to recover a lot of the mechanics of the knee. Do all that stuff. I'm Trevor from Smashworks. I'll see you tomorrow. All right.